Welcome to my shop. My name is Steve Rowe and in today's video I'm going to provide an introduction and overview to the Hoffman Dovetail Joinery System. This system is not new in my shop. I've had a Hoffman Model MU2 manual machine for the last 18 plus years. Approximately three years ago Hoffman Machine Company updated that model and have come out with a new model, the MU3. And Hoffman Machine Company has loaned me a model MU3 to incorporate into my project builds over the next six months or so. So this video is an introduction that I hope will answer some questions uh, that may come up in the future project build videos and just provide you an introduction overview of what this system is. So let's get to it. The best way I know to describe the Hoffman dovetail joinery system is a sliding dovetail. It differs from what you probably used in the past in your, in your woodworking projects in that instead of a male dovetail milled on one piece of wood and a female slot in the other and adjoin the pieces of wood, this system uses polymer keys to assemble and you mill the female portion in both adjoining pieces of wood. You apply glue to the face. It doesn't do any good to provide glue in the in the groove because the glue will not adhere to this polymer. And once you glue this and you apply the two pieces you drive the dovetail key in to assemble the joints and the beauty of this is that there is no clamping required. It, it clamps itself. One of the more common things you'll probably see is a picture frame or a door frame. This used two W2 keys to, to join this. And this, it is very fast to assemble these joints. And, and again, the beauty of it is there is no clamping required. So. I like to recess my keys slightly. Uh, sometimes I recess them more than others because Hoffman does have available these wooden fillers and these are, these are not structural, they are for accent only. So I'll drive these keys in deeper and then cover them with, this is wingy, this is maple, there's, there's about, I think a total of about seven different species they are available in multiple sizes. Now the keys themselves, this is the W2 key, it's available, the keys are available in multiple lengths, but they're also available in multiple sizes. The sizes, there are five different sizes of keys and they are ranged from very small to very large. I tend to use the W2s, the W1s, and the W0s, which are the smaller keys, more frequently than, say, the W3s. And honestly, I've never used a W4 to date. They, they are just huge. Uh, and I typically don't do the type of work that that requires. So that's how you join the pieces of wood. It's very fast and easy, and there are no difficult clamping arrangements and it this makes a very tight joint from one end to the other. The ridges in this in these dovetail keys and typically when you drive these into the slots these ridges some of the polymer will peel off that's perfectly normal but the depth of this slot you can use to adjust the clamping force if you make this slot deeper then you can get really large clamping forces. Now I wouldn't do that on a piece this thin because it would just blow out the corner. If you make the slot too shallow you could make it shallow enough to where the two pieces of, of wood adjoining faces wouldn't even come together. You, the key would keep them apart. The Hoffman instruction manual provides detailed instructions for how to adjust the keys, what depths ranges to use, 
and it does give you quite a bit more flexibility than your standard, say, wooden sliding dovetail joint. This particular piece is over six inches wide. I've milled slots uh, three inches or 75 millimeters deep, and even this can be a problem uh, getting that W2 key in there. And this particular joint, I was only able to get 60 millimeters. I've tried driving this down further. I tried using a pin punch and a and a, another 3 16 punch to try that drive that key further than 60 millimeters. It would only get down so far. Fortunately, Hoffman Machinery has oversized bits available, and in those you can get. Let me get. Let me grab the sample piece. <clears throat> On those, you can get multiple, stack multiple keys together with an oversized bit. And this is clamped, well, this has a, the routing depth was 82.3 millimeters, so it's over three inches. And, and I used two keys, a 60 millimeter key and a 22 millimeter, which is actually longer than that, to get basically clamping across the entire joint full length with no, not using any clamps other than the key. That's the introduction to the, the dovetail, Hoffman dovetail joinery system. We've covered the tightness of the bits, the, and now I'd just like to cover the machine briefly. Okay, as far as the machine overview goes, <clears throat> this particular model, is, this is the MU3PD. P is pneumatic, so it's pneumatically clamped and actuated. And D is digital, meaning that it's got two digital indicators. In essence, what you have is a router motor that's on two guide posts. And when I press the foot pedal, or in the case of a manual machine, pull down on a, on a handle that's up here, the clamp system will actuate holding your workpiece in position and once that's down the router will come up and start and mill a slot depending upon the height adjustment that you've got set for this adjustable stop. Now this clamp is adjustable. You adjust it to just, I typically drop it down to where it contacts the workpiece, pick up slightly and then it then tightens kip lever and it's set. There's a center indicator. The center indicator is for the center line of the bit, the router bit, and that's used for alignment, and I'll, I'll demonstrate that later. There's a chip breaker here that is for uh, cleanliness of cut, so you don't, you know, the chip breaker prevents the, the workpiece from chipping out where the router bit exits. There's two digital displays on this end. On, on your left, the top one here is to for the depth setting. And the depth setting also has a manual scale. If you don't get the digital version, you'll get a manual scale just like this. This manual scale seems to be set and calibrated for the W2 bit, the middle size bit. If you have a different size key, such as a W0, it has a smaller bit diameter and the scale will be off by about two millimeters so you need to adjust it to where it goes two millimeters deeper for the W0 key. For the larger keys you would have to go shallower because it has a larger bit diameter. Having a digital scale here enables you to calibrate the stop to whatever size bit you have in the machine. It's a fairly easy process to do. The lower indicator is for the 45 degree miter fence. And you can only get so close to the fence because you don't want it to hit the bit. But what that indication is, is that when I take a piece of wood and I adjust the fence, that setting tells me how far the center line of the bit is to the tip of the miter. 
I can see that that would be useful for a production shop where you're using common moldings than multiple people. And anyway, that's uh, it's it's a feature of this machine. How much I'll personally use it because my my projects tend to be one-offs. However, I've, I have used it, and as long as you record the data, it works fairly well. And I'll I'll show you a project in the future where that comes in useful. The system also has a 90 degree stop, and this 90 degree stop is used. I use that for uh, milling slots in rails for face frames and it's adjustable. It also has machined uh, grooves or offsets in this and that's used for the bit setup. This particular machine also has the MU, MU3. This is probably my favorite feature of this, of this model MU3 because the MU2 did not have that. It's got a micro adjust. You loosen that kip lever and there's a knob on the back where you, you can add very accurately and easily position the projection of the router bit for to adjust the tightness of your joint. So let's go ahead and get on. I'll make some sample joints and uh, show you how this machine works. It is quite fast and effective and I'm going to show these in real time. In this case, I'm going to be using these W2 keys. These are 5 8 inch or six, roughly 16 millimeters long. And I've got two pieces of 18 millimeter thick wood that, that I'm going to join. And I'm going to put two keys here. <clears throat> the first thing I need to do is set my depth. And my depth is set up here, probably eh, it's, looks like it's a little off screen. Let me back up. Wrong way. The depth setting is used here, and I'm just going to set this to where it's deeper than this. I think, well, let's try 16 and a half millimeters. And you, you want to choose the right size key because you don't want to just clamp this little bit back here. You want to clamp as much of the thickness as you can. So I've got that set to 16 and a half millimeters. I will comment that these that these scales can be adjusted if you prefer inches it can be adjusted there the scales on the fence and the table are both imperial and metric so you can use it that way the next thing I want to do is and I'm going to set this up there'll be two keys across and I'll loosen this and let's just have a let's put a key about there and then I'm going to put, I've got my airs hooked up. It requires 90 PSI air. It's plugged into the back. And uh, we're about ready to go other than hearing protection. And because this is a router, we're hearing protection and use eye protection. I'm going to adjust this clamp. I'll drop it down to the workpiece, lift it up slightly. And then I'm going to cut the first sets of, of bits, so here we go. I'm going to pick this up and adjust for the second key. I'll move it closer. I don't want to get too close to the, to the tip because I don't want it to break out. And yeah, we might be able to go a little more. Let's try that. It's always good to use uh, test pieces before you actually get to your real work. So now I've got two pieces with slots, dovetail slots milled in both of them, and they should be perfectly aligned. Uh, I would normally apply glue to these one of these faces, rub them together, and then use a hammer and drive these keys. And these keys have a rounded end, and that's the end that goes in first, and it's, it's just as an aid to get you in there. And you can push them in maybe a quarter of an inch is what I was was able to get just just with my thumb and then just drop them home 
And what I usually do since I set them deeper, I don't necessarily want these flush. So I've got a 3 inch drill blank that I use to, to recess those ever so slightly. And that way if you ever sand this, you're not sanding the, the tops off your keys. But now I've got a joint that where the tips meet up and I got a tight joint all the way across. So that's how I would do typically do a miter. The next thing I'm going to demonstrate is the is I'm going to simulate a face frame assembly. Get this stuff out of the way. To do that, I'll remove the 45 degree miter fence. I'm going to use a combination of this 90 degree stop and let's say I'm going to have uh, I got a style here my top rail and say a rail divider for a drawer and that's how I want this joint to look what I what I usually do is since because of the narrowness of this stock now, I was used the same width stock in a 45, but because I cut it a 45, I had more length to work with. I'm only going to use one key on this, and I'm going to mark it approximately in the center. And then let's say I want my drawer face to be here, so I'll mark that approximately in the center. If you're off, it doesn't really matter. It's easy to adjust and compensate for. So now I'm going to and get this 90 degree stop out of the way first and I'm going to mill the slots for the stock. What I'm going to do that is I'm going to align the marks to this center indicator for the bit, mill the slots. I don't have to change my depth because this is the same thickness material as what I previously used. And I'm probably not going to have enough room here, so I'm going to have to align that piece as well. And I'm, I'm going to do that but I will comment that because the suction of my vac, shop vac is so great that because of these slots, this, these slots, it has a tendency to hold the, the material down to the table before, you know, long after this clamp is released. So if you see me uh, waiting a little longer than normal, that's why. I would also comment that you could use this 45 degree miter fence as a clamp to clamp that piece there. I personally don't use that. I've not found it to be necessary. So what I'm going to do is align that, drop that down, pick it up slightly, put my hearing protection on, I'll just look over the clamp, line the center indicator up with my mark, and so I've now, now I've got the two slots milled in my rail. Now what I'm going to do is use the 90 degree stop as an aid to keep these smaller reference pieces square to the fence. And I probably should have marked which piece went where, but I didn't, so we'll just figure it out. Now because I just manually marked these, I don't know whether this is the same setting or not. I'm close, but I do need to adjust it ever so slightly. Now normally for a face frame I would be using two dovetail keys in rails but I'm usually working with stock that's a lot uh, wider than this. And then I'll take my two keys, I would apply glue to this surface 
rub the two joints together and then insert the key and drive it home. Do the same thing with this one. Use the punch to drive that home. And that's how I would assemble the face frame. So I hope this has provided a good introduction to the Hoffman dovetail joinery system and the MU3 machine. All the, all the videos that, that have this machine in it in the future are going to be project builds. And to avoid the idea that this is an infomercial, it is not. I'm going to show, have detailed builds of the projects, this use of this machine, its setup, and how I configure it is, is just going to be a portion of those builds. So I think even if you do not have a Hoffman machine, that you will find that uh, information in these, in these upcoming videos to be useful because it's, it's going to cover a lot more than this. But one of the things I like to do is make small boxes. And the W0 keys that, that Hoffman came out with about three years ago, I think it was in conjunction with this machine, enables you to use much, or enables me to use much thinner stock than I've been able to use before. This is a fitted lid box. It's got a shop made veneer covering and I use W key, W0 keys to make this, this uh, box and there are keys on both the top and the bottom and I'm going to show you how to do that. I'll discuss that in the next video but the actual build is going to be a shadow box and this is a fitted lid shadow box this is made of mahogany I've used the W0 keys but I'm also going to show you how I use um, how I make these holly inlays to cover these uh, W0 keys it's got a polycarbonate uh, top so you can see through it. And the beauty of this is this is, a, this is a box. It's got a fitted lid on it. And I can hold this upside down and the lid will not fall off. One of the features in the next video is I'm going to show you how to get such a joint. And it's easy enough to pull apart and you'll notice that there's, a, there's just a rabbit fit all the way around. There's a, there's a a velour lining in the bottom. I'll show you how to do that. And um, anyway, that's upcoming in the next video. And I hope you stay tuned and watch these because it's uh, it's going to be fun. So thank you for watching. And uh, if you've got any questions or comments, I'll do my best to answer them. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.